So in this video, we're going to look again at tree diagrams, but this time consider what happens when things change after certain events, and that's known as conditional probability. Okay, so let's do the first question. Uh, a bag contains seven uh, red balls and three green balls, two balls taken from the bag, find the probability that they're both red. Okay, so we start off in exactly the same way as we have done before with the branches of our tree diagram. Let's just do this quickly. Um, okay, um, and we have red and green. I'm sure that you can see where this is all coming from. If you've watched the first video and done the regular probability questions for tree diagrams. Okay, and this is the first um, uh, chance of taking a ball out, and this is the second up here. Right. Okay, so if we have 10 balls in total, seven are red, then clearly we have a seven out of 10 chance of picking a red on the first go, and we have a three out of 10 chance of picking a green. So no problems there. But the problem with this question is, is that we're not replacing the ball in the bag. So when it comes to the second go, there are only nine left. So all the probability is going to be out of nine. So if we consider that we picked red first, and we have already taken one of those original seven reds out, there's going to be six out of nine left over. There's still going to be three greens left. So that's three out of the nine remaining balls. So that's going to be three out of nine. Now, if we picked green first, then we're going to have seven red balls left out of the nine remaining. But if there's going to be down to two greens now, though, out of nine, because we picked one first. So that's how we're going to write our probabilities out. So from there, it should be pretty straightforward and the same as usual. Re uh, the chance of getting both red balls is going to be this top line of the tree diagram. And that is going to be 7 over 10 multiplied by 6 over 9, uh, which is 42 over 90. That can be simplified down to 21 over 45. And in fact, we can go through that uh, again, can't we, by dividing by 3. That's going to be 7 over 15. Okay, let's go on to the second question. So both green, right? So we're going to be down here now, green followed by green. Well, that's going to be 3 out of 10 multiplied by 2 out of 9, which is 6 over 90. That's going to be 3 over 45. And that can be simplified again down to 1 over 15. So let's just write those answers in. We've got A is 7 over 15 and B is 1 over 15. Right, one red and one green. Well, we can do that as well. That's going to be a combination of these two. Um, so we could do 7 over 10 times 3 over 9 here, which is going to be 21 over 90. And underneath, we've got 3 over 10 multiplied by 7 over 9. It's going to come out the same, isn't it? 21 over 90. So if we add those together, 21 over 90 plus 21 over 90, we're going to have 42 over 90. Uh, we can certainly simplify that as well. It's going to be uh, 21 over 45, uh, which can then be divided by three, uh, by 3 again, 7 over 15. Okay, so there we go, 7 over 15. Now, of course, there was a quicker way of doing that question because we were considering all three different outcomes in parts A, B, and C. And so we already knew they had to add up to 1, or in this case, 15 over 15. So if we already had those two, we could have taken them away from 15 over 15 to give us this answer. So we can take some shortcuts in certain situations. Okay, let's go and look at another example, this one with some decimals. Um, so weather experts estimate the probability of rain any day as 0 0.6 if it rained the previous day and 0 0.3 if it did not rain the previous day. Find the probability that a dry day is followed by two more dry days, two wet days, and a wet day, and then a dry day. Okay, this is a quite a challenging question to get our heads around. Let's see if we can have a go at this one. So first of all, we've got a dry day to start with. So our original probabilities are based on it being 
a dry day to start. So it can either rain or not rain. Um, and then again, we're gonna have another situation, rain or not rain, rain or not rain. Oh, excuse me, sorry, rain or not rain. Okay, so it's dry to start with, right? Okay, so it did not rain the previous day to start with, right? So our chance of it raining is 0 0.3 here and 0 0.7 to start with, okay. Now, if it did rain then, okay, that means the new chance of it raining is gonna be 0 0.6, which means it not raining has to be 0 0.4, right? These two, remember, have to add up to one. But if it didn't rain on the uh, previous day, then that probability now that raining is 0 0.3, which makes this one 0 0.7. So that's quite tricky to work out. Hopefully you followed that through. Let's see if we can answer these questions now. The next bit should be straightforward. So two more dry days is over here, isn't it? Not raining followed by not raining. 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 is gonna be 0 0.49. So A, 0 0.49. Two wet days in a row. Well, that is gonna be up here. Rain followed by rain. That's gonna be 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.6, which is 0 0.18. Okay, a wet day and then a dry day. So the order matters here. So a wet day followed by a dry day is this one, isn't it, right? So that's gonna be 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.4, which is 0 0.12. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. All right, so final question on this topic. We've got a pack of 24 cards containing 12 red, eight yellow, and a four pink. In a game, a player has to select two cards, one after another. Find the probability that a player selects and we have some certain amounts of cards. So in this case, it's slightly different to the previous example because we have three different outcomes. So we're gonna need to introduce some more branches to our tree diagram. So we can have red, we can have yellow, and we can have pink. Okay, so when we, uh, let's just start off by considering um, the first draw of the cards. So we've got 24 and 12 are red. So I'm gonna write um, 12 over 24 here. Um, we've got eight yellow and I'm gonna write eight over 24 here, and I've got four pink, so I'm gonna write four over 24 here. Now, I'm doing this question without a calculator, and I wanna keep my denominators the same, so I don't have any problems later on in this question when it comes to adding things up, but I can see already that I can simplify this by dividing them all by four. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rewrite these, dividing them all by four. So 12 over 24, is um, going to be three out of six. Eight over 24 is gonna be two out of six. Four over 24 is gonna be one out of six. And that'll help me with my calculations later on. Okay, so now then let's carry on. Um, we've got red first. Um, right, so um, we are going to have four different branches coming out of red, four coming out of yellow, and my tree diagram will get squashed here, and four, sorry, and three, I should have said three there, three coming out of pink, right. And again, we can have red, yellow, pink, red, yellow, pink, red, yellow, pink. All right, okay. So now then, we're down to 23 cards, right? Because we've already picked one. So we, if we pick red first, there's going to be 11 reds left over out of 23. There'll still be eight out of 23 yellows, and we're still gonna have four out of 23 pink. If we had picked yellow first, we are gonna have still 12 reds left over out of 23, but we've only got seven out of 23 yellows, but still have four out of 23 pink. 
And then finally, if we had chosen pink first, we're still gonna have 12 out of 23 um, red balls. We're still gonna have eight over 23 yellow balls, but we'll be down to three out of 23 pink balls. So that is what our tree diagram is going to look like. Okay, so we're going to have to do some difficult calculations here. The first thing we're going to, I can clearly see we're going to have to do is work out what is 6 times 23. So if you don't have a calculator and you're doing this by hand, let's just, on the side somewhere, work out what is, uh, excuse me, uh, 6 times 23. So I will do it using my grid method, 23 times 6. So it's three times six is 18, two times six is 12, eight, three, well, there's 138, right? Okay, so our denominator is gonna be 138. So uh, red followed by red, okay, something out of 138, clearly, and we're gonna get that by doing three over six times 11 over 23, so that's gonna be 33 over 138. Okay, B, two yellow in a row. Right, okay, so again, it's going to be 2 over 6 times 12 over 23. Well, again, I've already worked out the denominator, 138. It's going to be 24 out of 138. Oh the wrong place 24 out of 138 okay two pink well that's going to be one over six times three over 23 that's going to be three over 138 so that's right there in there three over 138 okay now it's going to get tougher Right, two cards that are the same color. So what we can do there is we can add those together. We've just worked out two reds, two uh, yellows, and two pinks. Well, we could add those up. So we can do, let's do it over here, shall we? 11 over 23 plus 24, excuse me. Let's start again. Okay, red was 33 over 138 plus 24 over 138 for yellow, plus three over 138 for pink. Well, 33 plus 24 is 57, plus the three is 60, so it's a 60 over 138. 60 over 138, right. A pink and a yellow card in any order. Right, so let's find those. So a pink and a yellow, well, that would be this one. And also, it's going to be this one. So let's work those out and add them up. So we're going to do 2 over 6 times 4 over 23 here, which is 8 over 138. And here we're going to have 1 over 6 multiplied by 8 over 23, which is, again, going to be 8 over 138. So we need to add those two together. And that is going to give us 16 over 138. There we go. Tough question with our calculator, but certainly doable. Okay, good luck.